Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations. And so today's video, I'm going to be going through the Mars-Venus conjunction. This is going to be an Aquarius, and this is going to be happening on the 22nd of February um, this year, of course. And it's going to be happening at six degrees of Aquarius, okay? So this astrological alignment, if you've been following the recent videos that I've been doing, which I encourage you to check out if you haven't, there is a, a link in the description as well as the uh, comment section. There's a playlist I've created, so you can go through the playlist. And if you've been following along, you'll know that I've been talking about the significance of this uh, new phase conjunction and the impact that it will have uh, not only for you individually in terms of your own personal life, but also how it's going to set the stage for the next year and a half's um, ways in which our governments will establish new laws, the values that will come from the the, the Mars-Venus conjunction. So there's a lot that's going to change with this transit, or at least set in motion. And then we've also got the Chiron North Node conjunction that's happening in Aries, and the relationship to that is because of Mars. And then we've also got the lunar nodes that are the, the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse that's going to be happening in April. Um, those are significant. So today's, well, on the 22nd of February's new phase conjunction with Mars Venus, simply put, this is the, this is the energy that will be present for a new cycle to begin in your life. A new cycle to begin in my life. A new cycle to begin in terms of the collective. That's the potential, okay? So there's a new evolutionary potential regarding our inner relationship to ourselves and the way that we act on those relationship patterns, okay? There's a potential for a new pathway, a new pattern, a new way of behaving, a new set of embodied experiences to be lived through with this new phase conjunction, okay? So that's what's present at the time. On the 14th of February, and I think it was uh, the 14th, and then we had Pluto-Venus. So on the 14th of February, you had Mars-Pluto conjunction. And then on Saturday, this Saturday that just went past, we had Venus-Pluto conjunction. And all you need to do is over the last week, notice emotional changes in your sphere, in your emotional sphere, right? In your reality. What have been significant breakthroughs or significant realizations or significant patterns that you've been working on consciously or have been struggling with and then had a breakthrough over these last, this last week that now you're sitting with, okay? So something that's present with you right now and this new phase conjunction that will happen on February the 22nd, that will be where you get to take this, this insight and live it, okay? Like live the insight, live the experience, act on the insight, okay? That's the potential that sits with this um, story. So... I'm going to go over to the chart for us first to, to take a look at this uh, new phase conjunction. So as you can see, Pluto at one degrees, Venus is now sitting at six, Mars is sitting at six, and that's where the new phase is. This new phase energy, as you can see, there's a red line and it squares Jupiter. The red line is a square and a square means tension, like something wants to break through, something wants to to break through, okay? So in all of us, there is a new, fresh energy that wants to break through into our awareness, okay? And if you reflect on what has been taking, what has been happening for you over the last week, maybe even longer, but I would say the last week has really been the most intense, and you, again, as I said, reflect on what new position or new insight or new emotional challenge 
not an emotional challenge, but a new emotional position that you've taken or insight that you have, you want to now act upon that. Okay, with this energy. It's a fresh new beginning. It's an emergent energy. Now, Aquarius is the archetype of going beyond something. As I've talked about in the stellium, right? Aquarius stellium video. If you haven't watched that one, I encourage you to watch that. I go deep dive into it. But essentially, we're we're wanting to to move beyond something. So there is there is an a, there is a, an emotional or psychological or a belief pattern within yourself, whatever that may be. And this energy is saying, can we grow beyond that? Can we move beyond that? Okay. It's not a move away from it to say I ignore it or disassociate from it. It's I'm wanting to form a new way of relating to this part of myself and this insight that I may have received or this revelation I may have or this perspective that I feel is important for me, or even I don't have any of those, but I know that something needs to change within me. That can also be very true for many of you. That energy is like, okay, I I, I need to go beyond that. I need to grow beyond that. Okay. So new patterns and growing beyond. And the Jupiter energy over here in Taurus is a new, fresh perspective, a shift in perspective for ourselves at a very deep, self-preserving way. Okay? All right. So if you've watched Venus conjunct Pluto video, you will know that a big part of this Pluto-Venus work was to, re is, was to see that we have layers of emotional development, layers of emotional structuring from when we were younger that we carry with us, that impact, that play out, that reflect, that show up as adults. Okay, so this is me, the Simon me, right, as an adult, but I'm still emotionally connected to the child version, right? The younger version and those patterns come out. So this energy is about breaking beyond that. And the Mars energy is pushing that to the surface so you can see where it is. This new phase energy is saying, okay, well, let's grow beyond that. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the holding pattern that we've got right now. Okay, so if we take this slide over here and we move back all the way to the beginning, we have a new evolutionary cycle about to occur for us. What is something that is new? What is that? Is it something that has already existed in reality? Is it something that we fully understand or uh, like can, can make sense of? Right? When a baby comes into the world, right, it's its psychological emotional relationship to this new environment is not like, yeah, I got this. I know where I am. It's wow. New sensations, new experiences, new perceptions, new, f new feelings, etc. Well, this new phase energy is exactly that. It's something fresh. It's something new. So there are new patterns, new possibilities, new situations, new scenarios that are presently available for us to tap into. Okay. Now, the way we experience this is through the action of this insight or this choice that we make. So we make this choice to say, I no longer want to um, be possessed by a victimization pattern. I choose to grow beyond that. So I'm going to like try to understand the grief associated with this loss of agency that has got me stuck in a, in a pattern of victimization. Oftentimes victimization states are always because there is a need to acknowledge the impact of something and then to get into the state of anger. And then from anger, you can process through the emotions and then you can leave, relieve yourself of it. But in that victimization pattern, this energy right now says, okay, how is that serving you? And you can say, well, maybe not serving me. I don't want to be in it. So the action will be to make the choice to say, I want to grow beyond this. And then the environment that you're in will provide a reaction to that. So in this new phase energy, the way that we learn and grow into this pattern is through this relationship between I make a choice 
and then there's a reaction that I interact with and I make the choice and then I, I deal with the reaction. So we're always constantly in relationship between my choice to do something new and then the environmental feedback that comes back at me. Yeah. In so when it's new phase energy, we don't know that. It's deeply instinctual. It's like, okay, I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to explore this. So I'm going to move in this direction. Let me see where this takes me. That's it. That's that's the, the wisdom I'm trying to offer you here. Is that new phase energy does not have something defined. It just says something fresh. Let's move in that direction. Let's try different things. Let's see what happens. Okay? So be open to something new. Be open to a new experience. Be open to something, to trying something and, and moving and growing beyond your current state. Okay, so reaction uh, or action as uh, I act in somewhere, and then I and then I process the reaction and the feedback from the environment. Okay, so a new phase conjunction is simply just the initiation of this new evolutionary cycle that has to do with I'm going to try something, I'm going to get some feedback from the experience. I'm going to try something. I'm going to get feedback from the experience. And it's a continuous seesaw between action and feedback. Action, feedback. Okay? That's how you do with this. That's you take one step forward, and you experience something, and then you digest it and process it, and then you take another step forward, and so on. Okay? Now, with this new phase conjunction, you and me are evolving our own natal planets, okay? So in the past videos, I said, well, find out where this new phase conjunction lands in your astrology charts. So many of you said it's happening in my eighth house. Many of you said it's happening in my first house. Some of you said it was, you know, you know. Now, the next piece that I want us to do is I want us to embrace the idea that you are evolving your own personal planets, okay? So what that means is you, as a person, when you were born, you had Venus in a house and sign. You had Mars in a house and sign. Those planetary systems become the baseline, right, for the way that you relate to your life, Venus, and how you act on those those values, etc. So somebody has Venus in Aquarius and their Mars sits in, um, I don't know, Gemini. Okay. The values are Aquarius themes, like learning to individuate themselves, to break out of the norm, to, to say no, where everybody says yes, that's the value. And the Mars in Gemini is how do I action that? How do I, how do I, give voice to that. That would be Mars and Gemini, right? So Mars is the action and Venus is the value alignments. So when I'm aligned with something and then I act, I experience progression. Does that make sense? So your natal planets are what being are what are being currently evolved with this transit. And the reason why this is the case is because the transit is in relationship to you right? Mars and Venus in Aquarius is the collective going through this general theme, but that general theme is being impressed upon you, and each of us has a unique placement of Mars and Venus in our chart, okay? So Venus in Aquarius is evolving your natal Venus. Mars in Aquarius is evolving your natal Mars. So here's what it looks like in reality, okay? So here we have an astrological chart, and on the inside of the wheel, you see Venus at 4 degrees of Aquarius, and you see Mars at 12 degrees of Virgo, okay? So right at the top of the chart, you have Mars there. So this is where, this, this is where Mars and Venus was in the sky at the time when this person was born, and so their karma, right, in this lifetime is to resolve this Mars Venus dynamic. So this person has Venus in Aquarius. So their relationship to themselves has got this Venus theme. I'm learning how to, um, like Venus in Aquarius is where am I being, what in my life is breaking apart and where am I being taken to, right? What new experience am I being brought to? That's their natal Venus, right? 
and their Mars is in Virgo. So the way that they would experience this Venus in their chart is that they are learning to do Mars, more Mars Virgo experiences. They're learning that all of their choices will bring them a deep experience of emotional self-understanding. Now, I don't want to synthesize this chart too much because it gets too complicated. The point I'm trying to make here is, is that this person, okay, you can see here, actually, their Mars and Venus is literally in Aquarius, and they're going to have a Venus return. So this Mars and Venus is evolving their natal Venus, and their Mars that's in Aquarius is evolving their Mars. So what this means in reality is that you need to take your astrology charts, you need to put the transits up, right? And you need to be able to then understand the purpose of your Mars in your charts. You have to understand the Venus in your chart and that know that this Mars-Venus conjunction in, in Aquarius is evolving your personal planets. Now, this, is, this has got a layer of complexity to it that I recognize can be difficult for those of you that don't follow astrology. And your natural reaction is, well, what does this mean for me? Okay, so, you know, working with an evolutionary astrologer can help you with this process. Okay, understanding these questions can help you with this process. One of the dilemmas that we currently face now is how do I answer this question? And the reason why this dilemma is in, in reality is because we don't have that somatic connection to these archetypes. We don't have a relationship to our astrology chart. We don't have a living representation of what these planets mean for me. Again, that's the basis of the immersion program. And I'm going to show you now exactly how you can do this for yourself using the, the immersion. Like this is, this is why I'm so excited about it because it gives the agency back to you as the person. Okay, so let's go back to this chart over here. And I am going to show you an example of somebody who has who actually has Mars in Aquarius. <laughs> so they're they're decent, they're evolving their own Mars placement. Um, but what's also really fascinating is this is a this is a living representation of how to do this work. Okay. So for those of you that are new to this channel, because I've seen a lot of new people come through. And for those of you that are sort of still following me, you'll know exactly how I work with astrology, right? It's a hands-on experience. It's like lived experience. This is not just random. We are here to deeply connect with these experiences that we have and afford insight from them. So here's an example of what it looks like to actively understand this new phase conjunction and also what it looks like to move, walk away from this video and say, okay, so how can I actively engage in the consciousness that is present for us right now. So here's an example of what that looks like, okay? So this is with somebody that, I, that I've been closely working with. And when uh, they posted it to me, uh, this, this, I, the first thing I thought was, wow, this is amazing. And it is exactly how I envision or imagine these, how to work with these transits. So if you get a piece of paper, then this is unique to this person, right? This is their personal planets and how they've been conditioned in their life in relation to the transits that are currently offering liberation, freedom, and a new way. Okay. So notice how it says my shifting values. Okay. So here the person said they're going from this personality of achievement to authenticity. So I know this person in terms of their conditioning, they've had experiences where they've needed to live out the legacy of another person, that their identity has been deeply associated with, this is who I should be in the world. But now with this energy present right now, they're not only reclaiming their truth and their authenticity, but they're also moving beyond out of the shell that no longer represents the truth for them anymore. So this is their version, right? So instead of achievement, I'm moving to authenticity. Instead of tr uh, uh, tradition, I'm moving to freedom, right? Instead of living under this order process of this is how these things work, I'm going to go and I'm moving into joy, experiences of joy versus linearity, right? Instead of having this, oh, I should be competent with everything and everybody else is more competent than me, I can step into a state of learning. Where am I learning? Where am I growing? Right? So you get the picture of what this is about, right? You can see how they're moving beyond 
these pre-existing definitions that they have perceived their world to be and their values to be and have completely shared that and now stepping into something new and empowering. And I love it. It's, this is it. If this was a representation of the energy, then this is it. So notice the other piece here where they go, how can I embrace my new and true values, right? By releasing the need to control life, by seeing life as an adventure, right? So you see that, how can I live my authenticity? Where can I move into freedom? How can I experience life as adventure? Showing up and taking space with my authentic self. Learning to say no and establish healthy boundaries, right? This is the shift in consciousness that I'm referring to. And then also, how can, what fears do I need to overcome? So not being recognized and becoming irrelevant was a fear. So my fear of invisibility. But by living more authentically, living in alignment with freedom, living from joy, living in a state of, 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 of connection, right? Which they're right there. That can be a part of belonging to people who are not, a, that are able to see them, to see their true sense. Does that make sense? So this is the shift, right? This is the, the thing that I'm pointing to over here. So this is an example, pause the video, take a screenshot, and then go and do that yourself, right? F ask yourself the questions. What are the old value structures that no longer work for me? And then what is the polarity to that? What does the new me want? What does the fresh me want? And then the new phase energy says, okay, from tomorrow onwards or from this energy onwards, how, what does authenticity look like for me? So I'm going to choose that over something else. Okay. All right, so that's another cool little feature that uh, I wanted to put out over there. And thank you so much to this person. I really appreciate you as always. Okay, so let's move over to another thing that I want to uh, bring up as part of this process. And I think everyone will feel happy about this. So um, the question becomes, well, where is this in my life? Right, you, Simon, you talked about to me about where is in my chart. Uh, I've got to understand my Mars and Venus. I've got to be understanding my Mars. Like, oh gosh, that's too much. There's too many things to to deal with over here. So, I'm going to try and simplify it for us. Those your natal Mars and Venus are naturally going to evolve anyway through this current placement. Having an astrologer or an evolutionary astrologer particularly help you understand the concept of your Mars and Venus will just deepen or provide you with an extra layer of what is really going on but just know that your mars and venus is naturally being evolved through this current placement okay all right now this next thing that i'm going to show you you can utilize it this is again how we learn in the immersion we can utilize it to not only answer the question about where your mars is and what that's about but it's also the question about where your venus is native in your chart and then you can also Ask yourself, well, where is my Mars and Venus landing in which house system? Okay, so let's try this out. Okay. So on the screen at the moment, I recognize this could be a little small for phones, etc. So what you could do is you can actually pause the screen and make it a little bigger. What I will do is I will I'll add this to um to a link where you can download this link. Okay, so I'll, I'll this image. So I'll I'll put a link on there as well. You can also download this. So first things first, I just want to say thank you very much to uh, Astro Kara who put this together for us. And she was just recently part of the immersion. And this is what we what we learned. This is how you will learn. And so she put this together for us. And so just a shout out to you. Thank you very much. I much appreciate it. All right. So first things first. If Venus and Mars, in terms of this conjunction, is landing in your first house, then what you need to do is look at where the Aries archetype is, right? So the first house, you see it over there? There's the, the Aries, like number one. So you take this image, you screenshot it, and or you download it. And what you do is you place the Mars-Venus uh, conjunction in the house system that is relative here. So again, as I said, for me, it's happening in my 12th house. So the, the first principle of the Pisces archetype or the 12th house archetype is decay right? Things are moving apart. They are no longer part of the same thing. They're drifting apart. Aquarius has decentralized it, and now we're in a state of drift, right? Things are drifting apart, and then, then they will emerge into new things. So things are decaying. Relationship patterns are decaying in my life, and new potential emergent 
patterns will come into that and take form and shape in my life, right? So for all of you that have got Mars and Pluto, sorry, Mars, Venus, and Pluto landing in your 12th house, this is where the principle of decay is taking place. And the emotional experience that you're going through is where, in this case over here, it's like, what is becoming unbound? Okay. The question to you is, how am I becoming unbound? Where in my relationships are the things that once were bound together are no longer bound anymore and they're drifting apart? So notice that. That's if Mars and Venus was landing in your 12th house, this new phase conjunction is initiating the decay of previous existing patterns. So not only you can experience healing, but you can also begin to move beyond things that have psychically bound you. Yeah. So where am I being, where, where am I becoming unbound? What is becoming unbound in me? And then a flooding experience takes place, right? It's just oversaturation of these intense experiences of flood into my consciousness. Okay. So just because it's Mars, Venus, and Aquarius, the tradition is to go around the Zodiac starting with Aries, but I'm going to go around the Zodiac and start with Pisces. <laughs> All right. So if Mars and Venus is landing in your 11th house of your astrology chart, right, the Aquarius principle is to decentralize. Okay. Aquarius is to decentralize. It's to break something. Somebody said it in the uh, evolutionary astrology mentorship program with me today. They said that, it, you know, there's this nuclei and everything is together like this. But when Aquarius moments happen, it breaks things apart from this nuclear experience, this nuclear, and it breaks apart. I love that. That was fantastic. So you watching, just know that that's what I think about it. It was fantastic. It was breaking things apart. And then that breaking apart allows us for something new to come out of it, right? So if it's happening in 11th house, where is this? Where are these decentralized accelerations and breaking apart happening within your life? So the key word that you want to be asking yourself is, right, this decentralization, breaking up. The embodiment arc is where am I being taken to? Right, where am I being taken to? This I, I'm going to be taken to somewhere. I don't know where it is, but the, things are breaking apart and, th and new experiences will come into my life and I'm being taken somewhere. I don't know where that is, but I'm going into a new place. Where am I being taken to? With Mars Venus, right? A new set of experiences are coming in your life and there is an opportunity for something to break apart, right? You may not understand why that's breaking apart right now, but you are being taken somewhere, okay? So you've got Mars and Venus landing in your 10th house of your astrology chart. The first principle with the Capricorn archetype or the, the, the 10th house archetype is the arc of development. Capricorn is very much about if I make this choice now and then I make the choice again and then I make the choice again, eventually at some point I'm going to go in a direction, right? So I'm undefining myself. So Mars, Venus in the 10th house, that can be in the sense the embodiment story for you is who am I becoming, right? What am I defining in my life? Who am I becoming? What is this new thing that I'm becoming? Mars, Venus, 10th house right? New phase conjunction. What are the new things that I want to define within my life? Does it make sense? Okay. So that can be a new career. That can be a new uh, set of relationship dynamics. Whatever that is, you're defining something new, right? And you're asking yourself that question again, right? What am I becoming in this lifetime? Where, where am I going? Where are these choices leading me to? Mars, Venus, 10th house. Okay. So First principle, if you've got Mars, Venus landing in your ninth house of your astrology charts, this is the way that it works. It's like this. So the energy of opening up, right, and exploring, right? Something fresh, something new, something you want to expand your horizons. So you're awakening the inner explorer, okay? So this is a great opportunity to step into a new set of experiences a new opportunity to broaden your perspectives. You may take a new education, whatever that is, there's a new opportunity to open up your perceptions. What is, what is natural for you? Where do you naturally want to instinctually open up your field of perception? Remember that this Mars Venus transit is happening in your life in the house placement and that house placement. So if it's happening in a ninth house, that is currently evolving your personal karma. So the need to open up and to expand and to, 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 to bring bigger awareness to things will help you evolve the current context of your Mars Venus. Okay. So in the 11th house, you're, you're, it's, it's a double whammy. It's like you really are decentralizing. You really are breaking free. You're really saying, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. 
okay? And I'm being taken somewhere. I don't know where it is. That's karmic for you. This conjunction is not happening randomly. It's happening specifically. And that what you're looking at here, what you want to do is you want to embrace and embody the principle of this archetype and work with it in within life. Work with it. Feel that sensation of where can I go? Drop into that state. Where can I go? What new experience can I choose? And then go through that action. Like, let me just go there, right? Whatever that may be, go to that experience, open up, strike up a conversation, explore something, awaken that inner explorer within you, and then go experience those things and see how that experience begins to give you feedback that starts to open and broaden your current state of reality. And that happens for all of them. So if this Mars Venus is landing in your 10th house, well, what is... What is, how am I defining myself? What are the choices I'm making in every single day? And concentrate on that and focus on that. Say, the significance of these choices are defining me. What new things do I want to define within my life? And then let that lead you as a principle, as a symbol. Okay. All right. So first principle in the Scorpio archetype, this is happening in your eighth house, right? This is about attachments and it's about merging. Okay. So what am I attaching to? Whatever attachments do I have that no longer serve me? What have I merged with that no longer renders me a sense of connection and, and empowerment? That's the question. And then the embodiment arc is a awakening to death by living life, right? At some point, you made this commitment. You made this attachment. It was life. -form. You might need to realize that that attachment no longer serves you anymore and you have to end it. And so you have to go through that process of betrayal. You have to go through that process of abandonment. You have to go through that process of loss. And something has to die in order for something new to be reborn. So you're awakening to the realization that life itself is also about experiencing things end. So where are things ending for you with Mars, Venus, in the eighth house? Where are the attachments culminating themselves? Where do you need to go beyond those things? Okay. All right. Mars, Venus in your seventh house it's very much about the arc of i'm consistently being configured in new relationships right my relationship pattern i'm being configured in new relationships okay so the embodiment experience here is where i'm learning about myself through being and understanding the relationships that i'm that i'm interplaying with so this is about paying attention to the types of relationships that you have and how these relationships are the mirror connection or not Okay, and it's a new phase energy, you may be learning to open up to new relationships and closing other relationships. So this is who am I in this relationship and how are other people seeing me, right? How do other people mirror to me, myself? We're learning about yourself through relationships. So a new evolutionary cycle beginning within the context of relationships. So if you've got this happening in your sixth house of your astrology chart, right? This is adjustment, right? This is adjustment, attunement. So in your sixth house, you may come into emotional cycles, emotional patterns of an abduction, right? An experience that has pulled you into the, into the unconscious, or an experience that has pulled you into grief, where things have not ideally worked out for you, where a crisis has materialized, and you're learning to experience your relationship to these emergent crises that are taking place. But you're growing through these crises and eventually developing a deep set of competence. So where are there crises in your life right now that need to be addressed? Where is the competence coming out of these crises? What are you being shown through these abductions? Right? This, this loss of innocence, this, oh my God, I, I imagined the world to be this way and this experience just completely disillusioned me. And now I see it for what it is. Purification process. Okay, so you've got Mars, Venus landing in your fifth house of your astrology chart, right? This is the first principle is color and brightness. Color and brightness is the, is, is the evolutionary intention, right? It's to make things colorful and make things bright. So with Mars, Venus in the fifth house over here, it's coming into and awakening your solar light, right? Who am I? Do you see me? Take up space. This is me. Right, But in a sense of actually aligning that space with the actual feeling of this is purposeful for me. So Mars and Venus in, the new, in this new phase energy may feel like something new is coming into my life. I don't know what it is, but I know that I have to bring 
me to the table. I have to show up and say, this is really what I want. This is the excitement that I have. This is the joy that I want to align with and make that more present consistently in your life. And then, as I said, it's a new evolutionary cycle, new potential, what's holding you back. But step into that light and say, this is my creativity. This is my excitement and pursue that. The embodiment arc is awakening the self within. Like, this is me, color and brightness. Okay? New phase conjunction happening in your fourth house of your astrology chart. So here the evolutionary intention is to experience the internal world. To experience the internal world. Now with somebody with Aquarius in the fourth house, there is a strong emotional disassociation or detachment away from your early life experiences. So part of this is you coming into a deep state of connection with your inner world to work through your emotions, to work through the insecurities that you have and to break free from the fear that holds you emotionally trapped and bonded to experiences that have in the past really, really brought, brought you out of your emotional body. So this energy with this planetary energy in the fourth house over here, right, is that you're, you're, you're descending into the darkness to re-emerge and re-be born. So it's like the cancer archetype does not have an internal structure. So you have to build that emotional resilience. You have to learn how to create, the, understand that softness, and then come back into a state of realization that you yourself can only have that internal security. So you're working on establishing new structures within your security patterns to feel safer within yourself, okay? All right. So if Mars and Venus is landing in your third house, <laughs> so the first principle here, right, the, the, the evolutionary intention with the third house energy is multiplicity and paradox. Gemini teaches us that there are multiple, there's always two stories to everything, right? There's always one story that's seen and one story that's not seen. So with this energy, your embodiment arc over the next year and a half, right, has to do with, you know, what is in the light and what is not the twins, what is seen and what is unseen. So with this new phase energy with Mars, you want, we want to bring into the light things that are not spoken about. You want to ask the question, what am I not seeing on the surface that may exist beyond the surface? So traditionally, a, a, a Gemini's got this word of gossip, right? So it's like, oh, just, you know, superficial conversation on the surface. Well, that's true. But that's exactly it, conversation on the surface. But there's always something beneath the surface that is always communicating at the same time. So with Mars, Venus, and the third house, you want to you want to embrace and open up to the realization that there's always multiplicity happening. There's always paradox that's always present. So open up to seeing these things, which you'll be sensitive to. But it's when you live this emotionally, you live it through the experience of what am I seeing in the light and what is behind the light? And I want both of them to be present at the same time. So my curiosity, I wonder what this person is saying. I wonder what Simon is talking about. That's your key word for this, right? I wonder. I wonder what there is. I wonder what that could be. Not like, oh, I'm curious. It's like, no, I'm wondering. Because what the wondering does, it's an act of continuous exploration and a state of openness. That's the, that's the embodiment arc of the third house. So when you've got planets like Mars, Venus moving through a third house, or you've got Venus in your third house, or you've got Mars in your third house, that's the embodiment arc. So that's what you need to do here, okay? In this exercise that I'm showing you, you take your Venus and you put it in, the, and your Venus is in the 10th house in your natal chart, know that you are here to align with a set of principles and a set of values that are consistently defining you. And if this Mars-Venus conjunction is in the fifth house through transit, that means that you're awakening that solar light. You're like, oh, I, I'm just, I'm, you know what? I'm going to follow a bigger meaning in my life that I know that I've always been putting off. That energy over here, this fifth house energy that's currently where it's at right in your chart right now, is evolving your natal Venus that says, I want to align with a bigger direction in my life. I want to know where I'm going. Does that make sense? So you can do that. You can take this chart and say, where's my local Venus? Oh, it's here. Where's my local Mars? It's here. And then put those together, like learn that, that embodiment arc as your natal, like your whole entire life. And then this transit itself is helping you 
work like how to make decisions with this new phase energy okay if that's too complicated then just leave it out and just do the new phase energy where it is all right mars venus new phase in your second house of your astrology chart this is the archetype of preservation right the evolutionary intention here with the taurus archetype is preservation self-preservation so yeah, you are really learning to come into where is my own personal space? What is the values that I want to hold? And I encourage you over the next year and a half to learn the word no. Say to yourself, this is not what I want. I'm open to that. I'm closed to that. I'm open to that experience. I'm closed to that experience. Most of the time, right, we've, when, our, when our boundaries have been broken down, we won't know how to say that. We won't know how to say yes or no. Or we will say yes to everything, as an example. So, the embodiment arc here, with when you've got this new phase in your in your second house, is I'm learning to preserve my energy, and I want to give it to things that are empowering to me, and I want to kind of not allow experiences that are disempowering to me, and that's an act of preservation, right? I'm preserving my existence over here, so I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to say yes to that. I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to say yes to that. Does that make sense? Okay. Finally, Mars, Venus in the new phase, energy all in the first house over there, and that is exactly it, right? The evolutionary intention here with Aries is a new emergent pattern. Something fresh is coming into my existence, and I'm ready for it. So the embodiment arc here, the embodiment story here, right, is I'm taking up space, and I'm becoming. I'm becoming something new. And I'm taking up space in this position. So the position here with this area, I'm taking up space and something new is coming into my world. And you can feel that with that phase conjunction, right? You can feel that. And this person that we we talk, we experienced here, they have a Mars Venus conjunction that's happening um yeah, in their in their their twelfth and first house. So just on that, that cusp area there. Okay. So let's go to this here. Summary for today's long video, okay? Mars Venus new phase conjunction is going to set the tone for the next five to six months, evolutionary speaking. This is an opportunity for something new to grow within your consciousness, a new position, a new take, a new way of relating to the world and yourself, okay? Over the last couple of days, you would have had significant experiences that would have brought old patterns to the surface that now you can have an insight from and break free from. This new phase energy is to say, okay, go and act on these insights. This new phase energy and the planetary evolution of, of this new phase conjunction is evolving your natal planets, okay? And an example of what we saw was how somebody was was reshaping, relanguaging what they were moving beyond and into something new. And then we did through the houses, okay? So those planets through the houses, what you do is you download the, the image that I'll have, I'll link it, um, and then you can do this yourself, okay? Take this energy, put it into that placement, and then take the wisdom of the placement. So where am I being taken to? It's Venus in the 11th house, right? I'm being decentralized. Something's breaking apart. If it's happening in the 7th house, oh, it's my relationships. How am I relating to myself? And then how am I telling how the people are to relate to me as an example? Does it make sense? Okay. That's how you use that energy. All right, cool. So in the next video, I'll talk more about um, some important things which will be coming out super soon. I hope that you've really enjoyed and valued this content. For those of you that want to learn this way, the immersion is coming up. There's a link in the description and the comment section to sign up for the waitlist. We'll be sending you some information on that, which I'm really excited for. Can't wait to, to, to reorganize the way that we learn the astrology archetypes by living the experience. Um, and and yeah, until the next video, have a fantastic uh, day, week, and I'll see you then. Bye, guys.